All right, welcome to the Mildred Stone Show. We are, I'm Christopher, grandson. We're right across the street from Voice of America Park. It's a beautiful day. And uh, we're going to talk about, we're going to do some work here. She just corrected me on her biography. I thought it was her mom, Nellie. But you said it was your Aunt Ruby, didn't you? Yeah. That's Aunt Ruby. All right. But her mom, Nellie, was born 19th of December, 1887. And Grandma was born 3rd of September. What year? 1913. Oh, nice. That's all. Aunt Blanche. There's your grandma and grandpa. Is that John or is that Arthur? They look pretty much the same, don't they? Yeah. This is an early picture out there. This is that bear hunting picture I love. Thirty-two lever action. Harlan County. Then they moved back to Harlan County, didn't they? I forget the creek you're. You're right next to the Cumberland Gap. Uh -huh. Island Creek in Owsley County. Island Creek, was that where you lived? Do you remember? I need to look that up because I don't know if you lived in... Your mom, do you remember what kind of factory your mom worked in in Washington? It was a prune factory. I didn't remember that. Yeah, her mom was from Indiana and headed out to uh, Washington State. And then uh, the Wydles, John and Arthur and them, they headed out from Kentucky. And that's where they met. All right. And this says that uh, the family moved back because of World War One. They thought they were too close to the ocean, being in Little Falls, Washington. Do you remember that? I didn't remember that either. Because Elsie's husband, Frank Lanning, was a shipbuilder. And, oh... Grandma said that they traveled through San Francisco and they saw the damage from the great earthquake from the train. Wow. Oh, I didn't know this either. And there's a picture of them sitting on the timbers that were for the Titanic. And here they are. My great-grandparents. Mother and dad, huh? Good looking couple, ain't they? Yeah. Yep. Their photo when they got married in 1910. Here's the oldest autograph I've seen. That's you when you're little writing your name. Isn't that cute? She wrote this little card to her mother on a Christmas card or something. And 
And so from Kentucky, you moved to Chapel Hill Ridge in New Trenton. And you brought your dog, Rover, on a train. I think you're, you said four, five, six years old when you moved. You remember bringing your dog on that train? Did he behave? You told me when you were down in Kentucky, your dad, her dad was a logger, John. And you used to go with the dog and bring his lunch to him up the creek. You remember that at all? And that's when a, a big black snake dropped in your hair once. Oh. <laughs> you don't remember that? You're better off forgetting that. All right. And then you moved to Clyde Jackson's farm in Okeana. You remember Clyde Jackson? We've got a picture of him going natural bridge. All right. But... There were nine kids. Melvin, he was the firstborn. He passed away. And then Mildred, Irene, and then John Everett, and then little Arthur, and Myrtle, who was here yesterday, Herbert Ray, Uncle Ray. You saw, well, David, his son was here. Elsie, Louise. And Elsie, Emma Marie, was it Elsie who did your hair all those years? Your sister Elsie, was she your hairdresser? Oh, and then there's Marie, and then baby boy Claude. I remember you said how you remember when Claude was born in that house out in Harrison, right in the living room. All right. You tired? You tired? I can stop. You want a drink of milk? Are you okay? All right. <clears throat> Yeah, the move to Chapel Oak Ridge was inspired by a friend, Henry Clay Smith, who was a friend of your dad. Yeah, Grandma said that he got John, her dad, Uncle Arthur, and Uncle Albert to move there from Kentucky. And your grandma had a coal mine in Indiana. You remember that? So Grandpa Ridlin died from that coal mine. And Claude, her brother, commented on that years ago. He said, you're fishing down there. Anyway, it's west of Bedford, Indiana, and Carbondale, Indiana. Oh, this says one time you and Bud went and you found the house where your mom was in, Carbondale, near the Indiana-Illinois border. <clears throat> A lot about her mom. And this was fun. Uh, we actually just watched this yesterday. But um, Grandma and Grandpa went to Washington, Little Falls, Washington. And you ran into an old guy who knew your parents. Do you remember that at all? But she said she pulled into that little town, and it was just a stroke of luck that this old guy, um, so this was the late 60s, but 50 years earlier, he knew her parents. Let me quote her. She said this. <clears throat> when we pulled in there to Little Falls, see the bank had burned down, there was a little grocery store, and we pulled up to a stop. We pulled up alongside, and this guy in dirty clothes came up, and he was heading to the saloon or beer joint. Uh, she said this in 2005. And he remembered when her parents got married and her aunts and uncles. 
And she said, quote, that was a miracle, an absolute miracle, that all my life I wished to make I wish to make that trip to Washington and see where they live. And she said, if Bud hadn't been the good, kind person he was, I'd have never got there. And so you came back and you told Esther King and your cousins about that. And they went out to see him, but he was um, in a nursing home and wasn't able to talk. Up on the farm, huh? All the Lido kids, 1934. Well, howdy! Hi! Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, cousin! How are you, sweetheart? How are you? Good. Hi, Grandma. Good. Oh, my gosh, where's your hair? It's been a few years. It fell out this morning. Okay. We were just making a video. How are you? All right, we'll close off this session of Mildred Stone Show. <laughs> There's Cousin Lindsay right there. See you guys. <laughs>